Welcome, uh, Karen Kirsten. You are head of uh, transaction banking at ABN Embro. You're sitting here together with Tim de Knecht, uh, your treasurer of the Port of Am uh, Rotterdam. Sorry. Um, please, can you explain why uh, the Port of, Ams uh, of Rotterdam is interested in blockchain technology? So, first of all, um, uh, well, about, about two, three years ago, uh, the uh, trade was all about economies of scale, being the cheapest. Uh, around to, uh, to facilitate trade, trade in your port. And uh, nowadays it's much more about uh, value creation, not necessarily just being the cheapest, but also having the lowest risk and being the fastest chain in, in Northern Western Europe. Um, that's, I think, one of the main points why we are looking towards blockchain. Uh, blockchain is much more about data sharing uh, and, and data experimentation. Uh, and, and the first thing to improve and to facilitate your uh, your network is to, to share knowledge and share to share data amongst your parties in the chain and that's where we look for uh, in blockchain okay thank you Karen uh, you were explaining right before the interview that you were exploring uh, the possibilities to collaborate with the port of Rotterdam on the blockchain technology can you tell me more about it uh, why it's interesting to 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 work together with a organization like the port of Rotterdam Yes, if, we, if you look to the Port of Rotterdam, we uh, are not seeking the cooperation in the terms of uh, Port of Rotterdam being a client of the bank, but as a logistical partner in the chain. Uh, uh, so to say, if you look at trade finance, which is a very interesting field for uh, blockchain technology, yes. because it's complex and international and you need a trust, a trusted information. Uh, and so we were looking into this experiment and uh, what we found out is that uh, um, since last year is that we put first we tried to put a bill of lading on uh, uh, on the blockchain we found out that, that that was not of the most value to the clients and they said we want a smart contract well the smart contract is between all the different parties in the chain and uh, the port of Rotterdam is is one of the important uh, uh, parties in that uh, in that field and and what's moreover important is that we found out where in in our workshop that we both have the same um, uh, values and drivers uh, to work towards so for example uh, to seek whether we can find efficiencies in the um, uh, uh, in the chain etc okay what were the takeaways for the port of Rotterdam in the from the workshop, uh, Karen was referring at. Um. So, so mainly that uh, the, 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 full, the takeaways for us are that kind of efficiencies, uh, improving efficiencies in the chain is, is also is one of the steps. Yes. Uh, but also the fact that you're able to, by improving efficiencies, adding value to the chain with different services that n that may not exist at this moment. So it's uh, it's much more about the exploration part of the of the unknown, uh, and that there is a lot of. Uh, parties within the chain which have different different drivers, different values and you need, you need to bring them all together to create a single driver or to find a single driver that you all have in common. Okay. And uh, sorry, it's not only about efficiency but it's also reducing risks. So yeah. risk of fraud, risk of uh, whether uh, the, the information is the correct information and also uh, well, risks of uh, yeah the all the risks which are in the chain in the process and when you reduce them it's more interesting uh, for the parties in the chain it's more interesting for clients who want financing for for their goods and it's interesting for banks okay uh, i wrote i read an interview with you on i think it was crowdfund insider or something that where you uh, said that you had uh, to distinguish between blockchain and bitcoin yeah can yeah, it's good good that explain. you mention it because if I say you have to distinguish between between uh, Bitcoin and blockchain, what we mean is that as a bank, we do not focus on the virtual currency, and okay. that we mean by the word blockchain. Uh, sorry, Bitcoin. You can refer that by virtual currency. What we focus on is the technology behind the Bitcoin, which is blockchain, and which you can use for. Uh, um, you know, registering uh, assets, values on uh, the blockchain. So not not the payment itself, but the sharing of information and having the distributed ledger. Okay, yeah. I can imagine, the, you know, blockchain te technology is something very uh, complicated to understand. Uh, for a bank, it's obviously that you want to understand what's going on because, you know, it's, it's important for your, for your industry. But I can imagine also that if you uh, have to convince your uh, colleagues at the Port of Rotterdam that it's important to 
to uh, invest time and energy on the blockchain that you have a, a lot of uh, reluctance uh, from your uh, from your colleagues. Well, How do you explain it that's to them? A good question because um, well, actually, uh, when you look at the Port of Rotterdam, there's two main spear points uh, in the Port of Rotterdam. Mm -hmm. One is logistics, and the other one is energy. Uh, on both ends, blockchain can be very interesting as a as a as a particular uh, type of technology that could change this, these industries. Uh, we have uh, recently uh, re-established our, uh, our strategy when it comes to uh, these two uh, two main focus points, and one of them on the logistics side, of course. Uh, we also move move forward on the uh, digitalization of these uh, of this logistical chain. Uh, when you take a look at kind of the, the chain from, for instance, China to Germany, mm -hmm. how how long would you say that a container takes from uh, from these two countries? <laughs> I have some knowledge about. It. I think six weeks. It's about 40, 40 days, so it's a very, 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 very close. Okay. And out of these 40 days, how long does this container move? I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> out of these 40 days, yeah. this container is moving 24. So it's 16 days that it's idle, yeah. either sitting in a port, sitting with a, uh, with a cargo door, or sitting with, uh, with a transporter, or sitting somewhere in the, in the chain. Okay. So it's very, obviously very interesting for us as a, as a focus point within this chain to optimize the, also the length of the chain uh, going forward and that's what I meant what I said earlier when it comes it's no longer about it comes to scale but about adding value it's yes. about reducing risk improving transparency and in, improving the speed okay. and lowering the cost of course and you can you are able to explain it to your colleagues because they are not afraid that when you say Bitcoin blockchain they say oh no it's not for us uh, well it, it, all, it, all, it always starts kind of framing what you mean Okay. And for us, it's, it's not necessarily about technology blockchain, it's about data sharing. Okay. And, and blockchain is, is a way to share data. Uh, it might not be the end game, but it's a good way to, uh, to learn what is to learn when it comes to uh, what your customers want, what your suppliers want. It's a very good way to kind of learn what, what the different parts in the chain want. Uh, and as I said, uh, blockchain is one of the elements in that. And we're very much happy to cooperate together with uh, with AB Nemro and be a partner in there uh, in, in the experiment to make this happen. Okay. Um, earlier this day, I uh, spoke with uh, Mark Buitenhek from ING. Um, AB Nemro uh, hosted um, two years ago the first uh, Dutch Bitcoin Congress. Next year it was ING. Uh, now it's KPMG. It's obviously that the, the uh, traditional financial players are taking the Bitcoin technology serious. Um, what do you uh, do uh, at ABN Emro with, uh, with with startups? Are you uh, collaborating with them? Are you um, do you have a special uh, strategy towards blockchain startups? Um, well, if you look to uh, to blockchain, and uh, we made an investment in uh, digital asset holding, yes. which is a, a US-based technology company who's really. Um, well, investing in applications with the blockchain, so that's an investment uh, um, we have made earlier this year and we uh, share in the Open Hyperledger project to see what kind of fabrics uh, uh, will be there, uh, or standardization uh, discussion, and uh, what, what else we do is that we, we are looking into which partners can we cooperate with to, um, well, get get a good smart contract on uh, on the blockchain yeah okay what are your expectations of your possible collaboration for the next year <laughs> it's still possible i know <laughs> well, exactly. well, what i uh, what i would expect is that we together find a find a, a good kind of experiment to uh, to move forward on this and to find the, the right pilot with the right parties in the chain and okay. to have a successful pilot in that sense yeah so, so to say, it's to get a good use case uh, uh, being work, uh, worked on the blockchain. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good luck with your uh, cooperation, and maybe you. next year you can tell us more about it, about the actual pilot. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you.